Good evening, y'all. What's, what's up with the serious faces? Very serious faces. It's good to be here tonight, and what a wonderful week. Yeah? A lot of food. A lot of food, a lot of leftovers. You know, sometimes the leftovers is like a feast. And uh, glad to be here tonight with you guys. And I have a short word that I want to bring quickly. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. Lord, we thank you so much for your presence in this place. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would speak to us, that your word would be life to us this, this night, Lord, that you would uh, produce in our life a greater passion for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to talk about um, kind of this, the series we've been on in the AM service, but continuing the topic about the word, and it's been really, um, really speaking to me and really changing my life in this last season as well because we as a generation we're so feel driven but we're not as much faith driven you know we we uh, think that feelings should identify the course of our life but feelings will change but faith is something that produces not just obedience but it produces faithfulness Faith will produce faithfulness in our life. And, you know, the word, we talked about the word, and Isaiah says that the word of God, um, it doesn't end. It's eternal. You know, the grass uh, uh, withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God remains forever. And so there's power and life in the word, and we spent the last two weeks talking about the power of the word. But the word of God cannot be alive in you. If it's not in you, you know, it's like, forgive me, pastor. No seat in that one. This one might have it. Mm -mm. What's up with this? This is not from God. It has to have seeds. Somebody want to volunteer to for the for the glory. <laughs> uh, failed illustration, but if the word of God is like a seed, let's imagine this is a seed. There's seeds in here. Um, I wish I could do it, but. <laughs> I have to preach. Um, if the word of God is like a seed, it has life and it has power and we know it. But unless it's planted into soil, it cannot become life for us. Does that make sense? So the word of God has power and we can talk about the power of his word, the faithfulness of his word, uh, you know, and just what that is in our life. But it has to be in the soil to produce life. And so it's not enough just to have the word um, that you can access. You know what I mean? Because with Google these days, it's like, man, you can get any scripture in about, you know, 1.5 seconds. But it's not in you. You need Google. But when it's planted in you, it goes beyond the information knowing a scripture or, oh, yeah, I can pull that up real quick. Here it is. But it's not life to you because it's not planted. Does that make sense? And so um, this evening I just have a few thoughts before we pray and we have fellowship and food. I heard there's turkey out there. Is that true or is that fail? <laughs> fail illustration number two. That one is not my fault, okay? Um, and uh, uh, before we go into that, I just want to um, give you a few things of heroes or uh, moments in the Bible that are so radical. But what I saw that they actually 
were able to be the people they were. They were able to be faithful the way they were, obedient the way they were, simply because they received the word. And, you know, uh, before we go, there's, there's a, a, a passage where Jesus tells his disciples to go to the other side. You remember that? He, he tells them to go to the other side. He falls asleep. The storm, massive storm, winds uh, begin to shake the boat. They're about to drown. They wake up Jesus. They are terrified. Jesus wakes up, calms the storms, commands the storm to stop. And so they encounter this huge miracle. They encounter something that they've never seen before, a man commanding even the wind to stop. And he tells them, he says, you of little faith, why are you so faithless? So you would think that they would learn from that situation, but later... In Matthew 14, it talks about Jesus telling them again to go to the other side. And he said, I will catch up with you. Can you imagine what that sounded like? How are you going to catch up with us? <laughs> you want us to go on the boat and you're going to catch up with us. That's very logical. But he says, go, again, he says, go to the other side. He released the word and said, hey, you're going to get to that destination. You're going to get to that to the other side. And again, they faced similar situation where the strong wind and, and trouble hit their boat, and they were completely terrified. You see, so many times in our life, we, uh, we have the same thing. And in that first scenario, they had Jesus in the boat. So they were able to access that in that moment right there. Second scenario is they had Jesus far away from them. But the same situation, the same trouble hit their, their boat. And they were again struck by complete fear. They were completely terrified. And again, Jesus says, hey, take courage. I'm here. As they see him walking and they thought it was a ghost. And again, the storms calm and we see Peter walking out on water. Amazing, amazing thing that took place. And so a lot of times we know the word or we hear the word, but we don't allow that to become... Uh, to allow that to uh, be in the soil of our life or in the soil of our heart so it could produce life for us. And so we face uh, certain situations repeatedly and our response is always the same. We don't change. We start panicking again. We start f being in complete fear, overtaken by terror. We, we do things out of uh, just emotions and feelings. But we're not anchored in who Jesus Christ is and what he said. None of them said, hey, wait a minute. The master, just like last time, said go to the other side. That means everything's going to be all right. We're going to get to that destination. They didn't say that. Again, they were overtaken by the moment in complete fear and complete terror. And so I just want to um, give us a few passages that really touched me um, to show us that faith produces obedience because you know, we have a problem in our generation with faithfulness, and I think it's because we don't have his word in us. We, we move by feelings, and so our feelings change, um, and we just walk away. We're not anchored in something that's constant. Our feelings are not constant. You know, one day you feel happy, next day you feel sad, and you have no idea why. For girls, it's even worse. You know, uh, and, and, and so we cannot allow our life to be steered by our feelings. That's disaster. You know, and so many times we yield and submit our life to what we feel and we think just because this is what I feel, this is what I need to have and this will make me happy and this will satisfy me. But I want to offer you something that has a little bit more ground, that's a little bit more constant, that's eternal, that will never fail, that will never end and that's his word. And so when we anchor our life in his word, when we anchor our life in what he said, we can begin to be faithful because our course is not determined by our feelings, but our course is determined by our faith. The Bible didn't say that we will walk by feelings, but the Bible says we will walk by faith. And so 
for that to happen, for that to become reality in our life, there has to be a word that brings life into us, that comes alive in us. We have to open up our heart for that word and allow that to become the course of our life so we can be constant, so we can be faithful. And so the, these are amazing passages, and, and you know these passages by heart. In Hebrews 11, chapter 17, I'm oh, sorry, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up by his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your sh seed shall be called. So look, God asks Abraham for such an obedience, for such a radical move. But Abraham didn't do it just because he felt like it was the right thing to do. Abraham didn't do it because he was strong. Abraham was just like us. He was a human who had a normal thinking, logical thinking. But the very core reason of his obedience, the very thing that gave him ability to obey and to be faithful to God is this. It says, concluding in verse 19, that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received them as a figure of sense. So when God spoke to Abraham, Abraham believed that the previous thing that God told them, he will bring to pass. So he said to himself, yeah, this is kind of crazy. This is kind of radical. But God told me that Isaac, out of Isaac, nations will come. God spoke to me before that out of him, there will be nations. So Abraham's obedience was based on his faith in what God said. And so he said to himself, even if I kill him like the Lord's asking me to, he's able to what? Raise him up from the dead. Isn't that crazy? The crazy thing here is not the fact that Abraham obeyed, but that Abraham believed. Can you see that faith? That Abraham was anchored in the word that God spoke to him about Isaac. And that allowed him to be obedient and to be faithful. And even in that obedience, he said that even if I kill him, even if God allows me to go through the, with this, he will resurrect him again. That's huge. Abraham was a hero, not because he was mighty, not because he was strong, not because he was intelligent, but because he learned to live by faith. And faith was anchored in what God said. Listen, situations will change. We could be that second boat going out and God released the word. And if we don't learn to anchor ourselves, if we don't learn to position ourselves in alignment with his word, we will never be able to be faithful. We will never be constant. We will be shaken by the winds, shaken by the waves, and we will hit trouble every single time. We live in a feel-driven generation. We walk by feelings, uh, and not by sight, but by feelings. But God calls us to walk by faith. And so I, I thought about faith and growing in faith and thinking about faith. But, you know, the question tonight is not how much faith you have, but what do you place your faith in? You see, everybody can start somewhere. I'm not asking you to have huge faith. I'm not asking you to produce trees out of your faith. I'm just asking you to place your faith in something that is bigger than you, in something that is constant. Are you placing your faith in Christ? Are you placing your faith in his word? Is his word setting the course of your life, or are you just driven by feelings, and you justify that in your life because it's what you feel? There's another amazing passage in 1 Kings 
chapter 17. You know, this is a time where there was such a drought in the land. And we also read about this story that has a hidden, hidden uh, key. You know, and, and a lot of times we see the action, but we don't see the motive. Just like in Abraham and Isaac's story. We all know the story, and we all talk about how great Abraham was that he did this. But there was a word that he was anchored in that carried him to that mountain. Same thing here in 1 Kings where Elijah visits the widow. And we're talking about drought. We're talking about hunger. We're talking about a place where people were starving and dying from starvation. And in this story often we see the great action or obedience of the widow. We see how great um, her action was and how God used that to bless her. But I want you to see something also in this story. 17 verse 8 and 9. Then the word of the Lord came to him, to Elijah, saying, Arise, go to um, Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. We see the story of Elijah that Elijah came to the widow and said, what do you have? And she says, I have nothing. I just have a little bit left to cook my last meal, feed my son and myself and die. And he says, okay, give me that last meal. And we think, uh, you know, and then, and then the, the widow's like, okay, I'll give you my last meal because I'm going to die anyway. But that's not what happened. The Lord spoke to her prior to the prophet coming. The Lord already released a word into her life. The Bible says when he spoke to Elijah, even before he spoke to him, he already commanded her to provide for him. So she already knew what God's going to do. And so when Elijah came, she actually tested him. And then he shared, the Lord told me that this is what's going to happen and, you know, your house and you will be taken care of. And so she obeyed. But her, her obedience was not to a man, was not to a prophet. She didn't just trust him because he had a title or a position or an anointing. But her actions, radical actions, were really anchored in what the Lord told her. And so in that moment, she placed her faith in the Lord. And she anchored herself in the word that he gave her. And so um, what can we draw out of these two stories is that faith will produce obedience. And faith will produce faithfulness. Without faith, we cannot obey God. And without faith, we cannot please God. Why? Because we can't obey God. We can't fulfill his purpose for our life because we can't, we can't have faith. We're not anchored in his word. And that's why I think it's so important for us, especially in this season of our life, in this season, to really go back to the basics. To really go back to the word and allow his word to penetrate our life. That we can stand in faith. A faith that's anchored in his word. I don't know about you, but I, I'm just passionate. I'm, I'm so passionate uh, for the word right now. Like never before in my life. It's, there's so much life. There's so much depth. And I realized how so many times I've been robbed by the enemy. And I've been dominated by my situations and by my feelings. And terrified by the storms and the winds. Let's, um, if we can have the worship team come, we're going to pray.
Let's stand to our feet. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word has life. Your word has life. Your word is life. Your word is Jesus. Lord, and we pray that this foundation would be established in our life. Lord, we're tired of going in circles. We're tired of being shaken by every attack, by every flu. Lord, we want to be strong. We want to be rooted and grounded in your word. We want to be strengthened in you. Lord, we want to grow. We want our faith to grow. We want to change. We want to get to know you. We want to become more like you. Lord, and tonight we choose to place our faith in you. We choose to place our faith in your word. Some of you, you're wondering why it's so hard to be faithful or why it's so hard to be obedient. It has to do with faith. But faith is not received through a prayer or a worship song, or the anointing oil. Faith is only birthed and only grows through the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So maybe you've, you want to be faithful. You want to be obedient. You want to be established. You want to grow into a full stature. You want to grow in wisdom and knowledge and favor. But that hasn't been working out for you. And every temptation that comes your way, it just slaps you in the face. And it knocks you off your feet. And then you get up and you feel good. And you feel strong during worship. And you feel strong during the prayer time. But you come out and that feeling is no longer there. And that temptation comes again. Or that wind blows again. And it slaps you off your feet. And again, you're on the ground. You're on the face. And you're wondering, when is this going to end? When is this going to stop? Why do I continue to sell myself short? Why do I commit to things and never see them through? I have just a simple answer for you. Faith comes through the Word. Don't just have access to the Word, but let the Word be planted into the soil of your heart so that it can produce life within you. So that it could light up your life. So it could produce and create and empower you to be victorious over every situation. To be like Jesus who was awakened by the, his disciples who were in fear. And he got up and he used the word and he commanded the wind to stop. You have that same power and that same authority to speak into your situation. And right now, let's just lift our hands in closing. Would you pray with me? Would you place your faith in Jesus Christ? Would you anchor your faith in his promises right now? Maybe your life's just been shaky. Maybe you've been going through cycles or the motions. But right now, would you, would you start now? Would you place your faith in Jesus Christ? Would you place your faith in his promises? Because it's his promises that don't fail. It's his promises that don't change. It's his promises that stand forever. And God is for you. And he's not against you. And he's on your side. Lord Jesus, we place our faith in you this, this night. 
We place our faith in you. Lord, and we ask you to forgive us for our unfaithfulness, for our disobedience, for our rebellion. Right now, Lord, we shake those things off. Lord, we shake those things off. Lord, we anchor ourselves in you because you are our hope. You are our strength. Lord, and I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would uh, give a passion like never before, a passion for your word, a passion for your word. Lord, that we would increase in faith, that we would grow in faith, and that we would be faith-driven, that we would be a generation that walks by faith, that is not shaken. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.